Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about electroconvulsive therapy procedure. I am Dr. Suresh Badanmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about indications and side effects of electroconvulsive therapy, what are the pre-ECT procedures you should do, how to give ECT and finally, how to provide post-ECT care will be discussed. Electroconvulsive therapy is a therapeutic medical procedure for treatment of severe psychiatric condition. It is one of the oldest biological treatment. It is almost 8 to 9 decades old. It is highly controversial treatment in the field of medicine. However, it is very effective. Let's understand the indications for electroconvulsive therapy. There are two important indications. One is primary indication and secondary indication. In primary indication, electroconvulsive therapy is the mainstay of treatment to control the symptoms rapidly. If the patient is very violent, aggressive, having homicidal tendency or suicidal tendency, the time is very is, is a very important factor here. You need to control the symptoms immediately. In such a scenario, ECT plays as an effective treatment and also controls the symptoms. You cannot wait for the medication to act. Invariably, medicine takes 2 to 4 weeks to act. You cannot wait for 2 to 4 weeks because patient is very symptomatic and it can go any way wrong. Hence, you need to provide ECT at the earliest. However, there are secondary indications such as to augment the ongoing medications, ECT can be given. If there is a partial resistance, ECT can be used to break this resistance. At the same time, you can use ECT also for treatment resistance conditions. Let's understand the indication of ECT by diagnosis. ECT is been given to almost all psychiatric diagnoses such as depression, bipolar disorder, mania, schizoaffective disorder, catatonia and various conditions. However, the main indication will be the severity of the symptoms. If the symptoms are very severe, you cannot wait for the medication to act. ECT will be chosen as a primary indication for treatment. Here, the severity of the, severity of the symptoms are indicated by whether the patient is very violent, very difficult to manage him, very difficult to control him. In such a scenario, ECT is chosen. At the same time, if the patient has self-injurious behavior, suicidal behavior or suicidal attempt, in such a scenario, ECT plays a very important treatment procedure. ECT has also been used in various other conditions such as Parkinson's disease, delirium, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, autism, agitation and depression along with dementia. In such a scenario, ECT is chosen. Let's understand what are the contraindications for electroconvulsive therapy. At this point of time, there are no absolute contraindication. Most of them are relative contraindication. Relative contraindications are space occupying lesion which increases the intracranial tension, recent myocardial infarction, recent intracerebral hemorrhage, unstable vascular aneurysm, pheochromocytoma, or any medical condition which causes high risk to give general anesthesia. Let's understand what are the side effects of electroconvulsive therapy. The most common side effect of ECT is headache, nausea, body pain which is called as myalgia, tiredness, postictal confusion and mild cognitive deficit. One need to know by giving electroconvulsive therapy the mortality does not increase in fact it decreases the mortality rate is very low it is comparable to minor anesthetic procedure let's understand what are the pre ect procedure you should do first and the foremost you need to do detailed evaluation of the patient general physical examination has to be done weight and body mass index needs to be calculated hemogram biochemistry such as renal function test, liver function test and electrolytes. Check for dentures and loose tooth because that will come in the way of giving anesthesia. 
capacity capacity to consent needs to be checked if the patient has capacity please take consent from the patient other optional investigation such as ecg in elderly patient or if he has any cardiovascular problem ct scan can be done to rule out any space occupying lesion x ray of the lung if there is any lung pathology and finally you can also do mini mental status examination let's look into the informed consent please take written in, written informed consent before give before you give ect invariably the consent is taken for a course of ect the course contains approximately 7 to 12 ect sessions you need not take consent for each session a course of ect is one say one consent can be taken however please remember the patient or the nominated representative can withdraw the consent during any time of re receiving ect that means the ect is given on alternate days to provide seven ects invariably two to three weeks time is required when the patient has received or two to three ect sessions the patient may withdraw the consent and you need to honor and respect the withdrawing of consent that is very essential however there are certain challenges challenges means the patient who had loss of capacity and the family members have given consent for ect after two or three ect if the patient becomes improved but not completely improved but he regains the capacity and he refuses to give consent to ect what should be done in such a scenario family member may say please give ect and the patient refuses please assess the capacity if the patient has capacity then you need to honor and respect the patient will that means the patient's consent prevails over the family members that is if the patient has capacity hence you need to remember capacity assessment plays a crucial role and you need to do capacity assessment every week when you are providing ect however some institute and hospitals take separate consent for ect and also anesthesia but however you can take a single comprehensive consent for both ect and anesthesia please remember ect is a process it is not an event just taking signature does not matter anything in the court of law you need to capture the process of taking informed consent and needs to be documented how to capture the process of informed consent document the reason for ect discuss why the ect is given what are the questions asked by the family members and the patient document that date the patient and the family members may take some time to decide about ect capture that discuss and document what are the side effects what are the alternative things been discussed with the family members provide maybe ect booklet inform consent any videos and brochure can be given to the patient and the family members in india the decision is taken by the family the patient may not have either the cons may, may not have the capacity or else even if he has capacity invariably he will discuss with the family members it will be a informed consent given by the family please document that you can discuss you can document that it was started on monday about the discussion of ect on tuesday these are the family members who are present they asked these questions wednesday they gave consent that means you have captured that the ect the consent was administered over a period of 3 days and you have given time for decision making that needs to be documented and number of family members involved in taking decision need to be documented here now let's understand what are the referrals which are required before giving ect here the referrals required are mandatory is anesthesia because you need to give general anesthesia hence you need to refer to anesthetist before posting him to ect especially in children you need to take permission from mental health review board under section 95 
there are some optional referrals. If the patient is elderly, has general medical condition, if he has focal neurological deficits or else he has space occupying lesion, you need to take respective referral and opinion. If the patient is pregnant, you need to take opinion from gynecologist. If there are loose dentures, please take referral from dentist and take an opinion. Now, the question is, should I give ECT on IP basis or OP basis? Inpatient ECT is preferred when the patient has severe symptoms who cannot be managed in the community. If he has impaired capacity, he had severe suicidal tendencies, homicidal tendencies and also is very violent. And if the patient chooses to be inpatient, then inpatient ECT is preferred. However, Outpatient ECT can also be given. Here, the symptom should be manageable. There are family members who are able to take care of the patient, bring him on, OCT, on ECT days. At the same time, they are able to keep him away from the food so that he is nil orally before he takes ECT. If they are able to take such precaution, you can give ECT even on OPD basis. Let's understand what are the ECT preparation which needs to be done. First and the foremost, nil orally. That means the patient should avoid taking solid food at least 6 hours before giving ECT, that is before anesthesia. Oral medications in the morning can be taken 2 hours before the ECT with a sip of water. There is no need to stop any ongoing medication. However, if the patient is on valproate, carmazepine or any anti-epileptic medication and benzodiazepine, those medication can be decreased if the seizure threshold is very high. Patient should be encouraged to pass urine before he receives ECT. On the day of ECT, dentures, jewelry, hair clips, contact lenses, hearing aids should be removed. Head bath should be given. Hair should be dry and clean. Presence of hair cream may lead to short circuiting and the current may flow over the scalp and he may not receive seizures that is seizure threshold may be very high. IV canola should be inserted so that the medications such as anesthetic, anesthetic medication and muscle relaxants can be given. Before ECT around 30 minutes prior, atropine 0.6 mg can be given to prevent vagal effect of electrical stimulation on heart and to dry up secretion. This is again optional. If the patient has lot of secretion and if you think there is going to be a vasovagal attack, atropine can be chosen. Now the question is how to do induction of anesthesia. Before you give muscle relaxant, you have to give anesthesia. That means if you choose to give muscle relaxant like succinylcholine, the patient is wide awake and you will be terrified when there is paralysis because of muscle relaxant. Hence, you need to give anesthesia first, that is thiopentone first. And later, once the patient becomes anesthetized, then you give muscle relaxant. Let's look into various anesthetic agents. The most commonest anesthetic agent chosen is thiopentone. Second one is ketamine, third one is propofol and etomidate. At this point of time, ketamine is preferred over thiopentone by many psychiatrists. Ketamine acts as an anti-suicidal agent especially in depression. However, most of them choose thiopentone. Thiopentone is given in the dosage of 3 to 5 mg per kg body weight. Ketamine is 2 to 3 mg per kg body weight. Propofol 0.75 to 1 mg per kg body weight. Etumidate is 0.15 to 3 mg per kg body weight. Let's look into the various muscle relaxant. The commonest muscle relaxant is succinylcholine. The dosage is 0.5 to 1 mg per kg body weight. The second most commonest muscle relaxant used is atracurium, 0.3 to 0.5 mg per kg body weight. The rarely we use rocurinium, that is 0.6 to 0.9 mg per kg body weight. Let's discuss about the induction of anesthesia. The first and the foremost, you will inject thiopentone 3 to 5 mg per kg body weight. Once the patient gets anesthetized, then only will you will give succinylcholine in the dosage of 0.5 to 1 mg per kg body weight. 
once the muzzle twitching stops. Till then, you will be giving 100% oxygen. You need to give at least 1 minute of hyperventilation with 100% oxygen before you give electroconvulsive dosage or stimulus. Let's understand how to choose the electrode placement. Invariably, as I mentioned in the previous video, there are three different types of electrode placement. One is bitemporal or bifrontal ECT or else unilateral ECT based upon the age, based upon the side effect, based upon the cognitive deficit you are going to get and the based upon the various medication he is on, you will be choosing the various electrode placement. Again, you need to understand the side effects is based upon the type of electrical current you are giving and the placement of electrodes. The sine wave causes more cognitive deficits than the brief pulse. At the same time, bilateral ECT causes more cognitive deficits than the unilateral ECT. And if you look at the, the hierarchy of side effects with regard to the placement of electrodes, sine wave bilateral ECT causes more cognitive deficits than brief pulse bilateral ECT. Sine wave unilateral ECT causes more side effects than the brief pulse unilateral ECT. Hence, whenever you are going to choose ECT in elderly and where the patient's cognitive deficit is going to be pronounced, please choose ultra brief ECT unilateral ECT to be chosen. What are the monitoring procedure you need to do during ECT? The commonest is AEG, second one is ECG, pulse oximeter and electromyography to monitor the EC seizures. Let's look into seizure monitoring and adequacy. The occurrence of generalized tonic-clonic seizures can be monitored either by EEG or else cuff method. This signifies the adequacy of treatment. If the patient gets more than 20 seconds of motor seizures, that means it is an adequate seizure. The length of convulsions measured by direct visualization of motor seizure is 70% that of the EEG seizures. For to get the, if you are monitoring EEG seizures, you need to get a EEG seizures at least for 25 seconds. For motor seizures, 20 seconds is enough. If you are monitoring EEG, this is how you are going to place the EEG electrodes. One of the electrode is placed on the frontal and the second electrode is placed in the mastoid process. Hence it is called as frontomastoid montage that is ipsilateral it is placed. The second method which can be done easily is cuff method monitoring. This is how it is which is shown in the figure. How to do this? Place the BP cuff between knee and ankle. Invariably ipsilateral in unilateral ECT. You need to increase the BP up to 50 to 80 mg above the systolic BP before giving succinyl choline. Once you raise this, the artery is clamped here because of the cuff. And once you give succinyl choline, that part of the leg where the BP cuff is placed, the succinyl choline does not reach us beyond that. Apply the electrical stimulus by providing ECT. And you start recording the time and monitor for the twitching which occurs on the leg where you are placed the cuff. If the patient gets more than 20 seconds of motor seizure, that is called as adequate seizures. And here, when you are monitoring, please provide 100% oxygen through a face mask which is preferable. Starting a minute before the passage of electrical stimulus, once he receives the electrical stimulus, you need to continue providing 100% oxygen. You need to hyperventilate the patient when he is getting seizures. Patient should be observed in the post ECT period till he gains consciousness and spontaneous breathing starts. Let's understand about seizure adequacy. The precise minimum duration of seizure required for optimal therapeutic effect is not known. At this point of time, we do not have scientific evidence, but various clinical practice guidelines using ECT 
for more than eight to nine decades, we have come to know that adequate motor seizures of 20 second is enough to consider for therapeutic effect. If you are monitoring through EEG, 25 seconds of EEG seizure is required. You need to keep this in mind, my dear friends. However, re-stimulation is required whenever the patient has missed seizure or inadequate seizure. What is this missed seizure? Whenever there is an electrical stimulation is given and there is no seizure either, motor or EEG seizure is seen. That is called as missed seizure. What is inadequate seizure? If the motor seizure is less than 20 second or EEG seizure is less than 25 second, in such a scenario you need to re-stimulate the brain. That's what the treatment guideline says. Let's understand determining the minimum seizure threshold. If ECT stimulus is to be given, you will start from the lowest dosage of the electrical current on the instrument. You will start incrementing if he does not get the seizure. If he has a missed seizure, you will be waiting for 30 seconds and then you will re-stimulate. If the patient has inadequate seizure, you will, be wait, you will wait for 45 seconds and you will re-stimulate the brain. In a single sitting, you can do four successive re-stimulation. That is very important you need to understand because whenever you give anesthesia, the anesthesia will last for three to five minutes only. For each re-stimulation, you require at least 20 to 30 seconds waiting period if there is a missed seizure if there is an inadequate seizure, you need to wait for 45 seconds. So, invariably, you get an opportunity for 3 to 4 re-stimulation. Why it is very important? You need to wait 20 to 30 seconds in missed seizure because there is a possibility of delayed onset of seizure. Hence, you need to wait at least for 20 to 30 seconds. If it does not get, then it is called as a missed seizure. Then you will immediately you re-stimulate. If the patient has inadequate seizure, you need to wait for at least for 45 seconds because he has got the seizure and the neurons are all in depolarization state and in a refractory period. At that time, if you stimulate, he will not get seizure. Hence, you need to wait at least 45 seconds and then you need to re-stimulate. Hence, you will have at least 3 to 4 re-stimulation chances by the time the anesthetic effect wears off. And you need to finalize the ECT dosage. You need to choose three steps above the unilateral ECT dosage that is 2.5 to 6 times of the minimum threshold. In bilateral ECT it should be 0.5 to 2 times the minimum threshold. Let's understand about prolonged seizure. Once you give ECT stimulation and if the seizure terminates within 10 seconds it is fine. Invariably, if the seizure does not stop even after 180 seconds, then it is called as prolonged seizure. That means if the patient continues to have seizure beyond 3 minutes, then it is called as prolonged seizure. You need to act now. You need to provide Dizepam 10 mg or Thoapentone 100 to 200 mg immediately to abort the seizures. Similar to prolonged seizure, there is prolonged apnea. What is this prolonged apnea? Prolonged apnea means if the spontaneous breathing does not resume within 10 minutes of the stimulation, then it is called as prolonged apnea. It is a rare complication of ECT and this indicates for intubation. Anesthetist should be on his toe and provide 100% oxygen and to do the intubation immediately. This can occur in a very rare genetic deficiency of sonocholinesterase enzyme. It is very difficult to know which patient has pseudocholinesterase enzyme deficiency. It is a rare condition. Hence, it is difficult to predict and to know. However, if the patient had recently attempted suicide with OP poisoning, that is organophosphorus poisoning, you need to be very careful at this point of time. And you need to tell the anesthetist, hence, he has attempted suicide with OP poisoning recently. That means, there is a chance of prolonged apnea in these cases. Now, let's discuss about maintenance ECT or continuation of ECT. As I mentioned earlier, 
A course of ECT means 7 to 12 ECTs. However, in certain patients, they require more than 12 ECTs. In such a scenario, we consider them as continuation ECT or maintenance ECT. Few patients may require continuation of ECT. The continuation of ECT is given up to 6 months in index episode to, prev to prevent the relapse of same episode that is continuation ECT. Few patients may require maintenance ECT for many years to prevent recurrence of the new episode. It is usually given once weekly or bi-weekly or maybe monthly. Here, you need to understand the difference between continuation ECT and maintenance ECT. Continuation ECT is to prevent the same episode. Maintenance ECT is given to prevent the recurrence of new episode. That is the difference. Continuation is to prevent relapse. Maintenance is to prevent the recurrence of new episode. Let's understand the defining the treatment response. Here, as soon as the patient is just to have achieved a maximal clinical response, ECT can be terminated. A typical ECT course lasts for 6 to 12 sittings which is required. However, some patients may require up to 20 ECT settings. It is based upon the severity of the symptoms at the same time response. Some patient may respond very rapidly, 3 ECT is more than enough. That means it is based upon the patient's condition, severity of the symptoms and also the treatment resistance depicts or dictates the duration of ECT. If the patient still does not respond after 3 or 4 additional treatment, you can stop the ECT. But however, the each individual ECT for a patient will be based upon the professional discretion, patient treatment response, symptom severity, how fast the medication is working, whether it is a treatment resistance or the patient has responded, if the patient has responded earlier for ECT after 10 or 15 ECT procedure. Based upon all these things, the psychiatrist will take decision. There is no straight jacket to say everybody should receive only 6 ECTs or 7 ECTs. There are various factors which need to be considered to tell how many ECTs the patient requires. Let's discuss about post ECT cognitive deficits. A recent meta-analysis showed the cognitive deficits seen are difficulty in orientation, verbal episodic memory deficit, autobiographical memory deficit, visual episodic memory deficit, attention deficit, psychomotor speed deficit and executive function after immediately after ECT. Most of these cognitive deficits disappear within 15 days of stopping ECT. That means most of the cognitive deficits are very temporary in nature. They last not more than 2 weeks. Hence, you need to do ECT, post ECT cognitive assessment. Invariably, it is done in most of the academic institutions. If you are giving ECT in a geriatric condition or a geriatric patients, cognitive assessment may be required. However, if there are, if you are giving ECT in a young adult patient, you need not do the cognitive deficit assessment. If there is an indication for cognitive deficits, postictal confusion, it is worthwhile monitoring it. If the patient develops cognitive deficits, you may have to space the ECT. That means you have to give one or two ECT sessions per week or else weekly one session may be required. There are various instruments which are available for the monitoring cognitive deficits. One of the commonest is before ECT record is the instrument which is available online which can be used before, provide, before giving ECT and after receiving ECT. Let's understand the concomitant medication. One of the commonest question asked is, should we give concomitant medication along with ECT? As I mentioned earlier in my videos, I have clearly said that the ECT is given for rapid resolution of symptoms, but the effect of ECT lasts for days to weeks. That means it is, does not give a permanent cure. It only gives fast rapid resolution of symptoms and the effect of ECT lasts for weeks only. That means 
the long stay treatment is medication now the question is should we give medication along with ect of course the current scientific literature clearly indicates there is no need to stop antipsychotics antidepressants mood stabilizers or benzodiazepines however if the patient has high seizure threshold medications such as valproate carmazepine mood stabilizers can be decreased need not be stopped even you can decrease the benzodiazepine on the day when you are giving ect if there is plan to increase the dosage of medication during ect that can be also planned one need to wait to complete the course of ect to start medication that means you need not wait to stop to stop the ect and then start the medication that will be wasting time because any medication in psychiatry has a lag period of 3 to 4 weeks by that time the medication starts working hence start ect and medication together most of the clinical guidelines recommend to start ect and medications together what are the relapse rate with post ect if you give ect alone the relapse rate is very high especially in chronic psychiatric disorder or psychosis bipolar disorder or in patient with diagnosis dual diagnosis has a relapse rate of 70% if you give concomitant medication then the relapse rate comes down to 40% hence one of the indication to give medication is if there is a high possibility of relapse please give medication and ect together what are the predictors of response to ect the predictors which have been found to in various studies are age with increased age the ect response is very good if the patient has psychotic depression melancholic symptoms or biological symptoms speed of response for ect if the patient responds in one or two ect that means he is going to respond very fast if the patient has suicidal behavior ect provides rapid relief if there is a chronic illness neurotic symptoms these are the poor response for indicators at the same time what are the good indicators for response in mania greater the severity of manic symptoms ect provides good relief and at the same time reduction of whole brain cortical blood flow is seen in various imaging studies indicates the patient will respond to ect poor response to ect in mania is poor premorbid adjustment psychotic symptoms in mania anger and irritability and suspiciousness have a poor response to ect in mania there are some biological predictor of response polymorphism within gene encoding of bdnf that is brain derived neurotropic factors drd2 gene drd3 gene comt gene and 5-httt serotonin transporter gene and 5-hydroxy tryptamine 2a receptor and non-epinephrine transporter polymorphism is there they respond they respond to ect very well to conclude my dear friends pre ect workup is essential concern to be taken if the patient has capacity to concern please take concern from the patient or else you need to take concern from the family members the severity of the illness and the severity of the symptoms indicate the need for ect majority of the time no need to make any changes in the concomitant medication in index episode please start ect and medication together no need to wait for the completion of ect to start medication it is advisable to start ect and medication together post ect monitoring should be done until the patient resumes the spontaneous breathing my dear friend please remember ect is one of the oldest biological treatment almost 8 to 9 decades of experience of using ec using ect is there at this point of time and however ect is highly controversial but very effective treatment at this point of time my dear friends thank you very much for your valuable time stay safe